Therefore, once more, I will astound this people with wonders upon wonders. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Christian Pentecostal Mission International presents Women of Vision International Conference 2013. Fear, the God of Wonders. Speakers, Pastor Mrs. Folu Adeboye, Mama G.O., Redeemed Christian Church of God, Dr. Christy Don Tete, General Overseer, Solid Rock International, Ghana, Reverend Mrs. K. Omobode, New Covenant Gospel Church, Benin City. Host, Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, and Reverend Dr. M. Ezekiel, the National and International Coordinator. Come and experience the God of Wonder. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Jehovah. You are worthy to be glorified. Almighty God. Glorified you are what Jehovah you are what to be glorified you are what Almighty God you are what you are what Jehovah what One more time, your word, Lord, you are worthy to be your word, Jehovah. Jehovah, you are worthy to be Almighty God. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Congratulations. You made it to 2013. You also made it to the Women of Vision Conference. You are not acting as if you are being congratulated. Somebody told you congratulations. Somebody told you congratulations and you are acting as if you are mourning. Celebrate yourselves and say glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you sit down, I'd like to give honor unto the Most High God, without whom Oge Chizika will not be standing here. You will not be standing here. To the Almighty God, the owner of the heavens and the earth, to whom all praises is due. We say thank you again. We can't thank you enough. Some people were here 2011 conference. They are not here now. Some people joined us. They danced with us. They sang with us. The very fact that you are here right now, you need to say thank you to the Almighty God. You couldn't have bought your life with money. You couldn't have bought your life with your voice. You couldn't have bought it with anything that you have. You couldn't have bought your life with landed property. You couldn't have bought your life with anything. So give God the glory. And say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. 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 I can't keep my life. I can't safeguard my life. I can't protect my life. You are the keeper. You are the custodian of this life that I have. Some people came for 2011 program and today they are not here. I'm not better off than them. I give you glory. I give you exaltation. I lift up my hands to you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my loved ones. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for everything that concerns me. Lift up your voice and give him the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you all the glory. We return all the glory unto you in the name of Jesus. Now, I also want to thank my own father. He's not here. I want to say it in, in, you know, in absentia. The one whose blood runs through my veins. God's general. A man amongst men. A man who preaches uncommon messages. Messages that are not conducive, that are not palatable. 
but he will preach it anyhow raw it's very difficult for you to see that kind of man in this generation everybody wants sweet talk the bible says in i think first or second timothy that people begin to have itchy ears why because they want to hear sweet things but this man is not ready to give you sweet things he's ready to give you raw undiluted celebrate the man of god celebrate the man of god celebrate him celebrate him celebrate the man of god we are we are chosen to have him we it's it's an honor it's an honor to have such a rare gem celebrate the man of god hallelujah praise the lord i also want to celebrate a woman <clears throat> she is a paradox of some sort I, sometimes I, I try to understand her mommy I'm going to say this I don't know how you're going to feel but I will say it Oftentimes, she is misunderstood but let me tell you something The Bible says that the way of an eagle in the sky cannot be understood. She's an eagle. If you want to clap, clap. If you want to clap, clap. If you want to clap, clap. Why do I say so? Because what an eagle can see, other birds cannot see it. What an eagle does is to soar high. And when it soars high, it picks the picture of what is going on. So when she comes back and tells you, do this, you say, oh, why do you say I should do this? Why? Why? Meanwhile, maybe in a couple of years or in a couple of months or in a couple of days, you will understand why. <laughs> Celebrate this woman of God. I'm saying it for myself particularly as a daughter as a daughter sometimes I'm like mommy why do you have to do I but later on I say okay now I understand why now I understand why because an eagle will always protect her own if, it's, if it weren't for her maybe cpm would be a sectional church what do i mean an Igbo church what do i mean one side of the country but she has decided to spread her wings and says fly 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 cpm fly cpm swa cpm fly cpm swa celebrate the woman of god My mommy, in this generation, you are going to be celebrated. It will not be after you are gone, then people begin to recognize your contributions. People will not, it is not after. When you are 60, nobody did birthday for you. You swallowed it, you didn't say anything. I knew it hurt you. <laughs> She will soon be 70. Soon. I promise you, CPM will celebrate you. It's a promise. I almost feel like crying now. I say, God help me. CPM will celebrate you. Mommy, do you support me? CPM must celebrate her. Give God glory again for her.
Hallelujah. I also want to give God thanks for my mothers in the house. Thank you so much for, for being mothers in Zion. Without you, the state coordinators will not be where they are. You, you may not know your contributions, but God Almighty has written it down. God has written it down. God has written it down. For pushing the work of God, God will not leave your children. For pushing the work of God, God will not abandon your children. It may be now, it may be later, but God will not forget. The Bible said that, 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 that he had preached a message. Before I go, he said, and God remembered. He said, for the sake of my servant David, God will remember. God will not forget. I preached in your church, mommy, and I said, your children, they are tied. Tell them, I said, all of them, Hagakwe Lugana, they are tied to the altar. Tell them, I said, they will not go anywhere. They are tied to this place. There's a sacrifice that has been laid, a foundation that has been laid. Our daddy says, don't kill this baby. It won't die in our hands. Hallelujah. Give God glory and celebrate yourselves while you sit down. Amen. I was given a topic to preach upon. It's called Color Your World. Color Your World. And um, for like um, three weeks or two weeks, I got the information. My spirit began to ponder on the purpose for which I was given that topic to preach on. And um, the Holy Spirit now began to open my mind onto something, and I would like to share it with um, every one of us. Some of you are wondering, why is she wearing white today? I'm not a celestial, though. It's for an illustration. That's why I decided to be on white to but trace a point. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Thank you. All right. Genesis chapter 37. Are you there? Okay. I will read from verse 1 to verse 4 and I will stop. Can we read together? Ready? Go. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and with the sons of Zilpah, and his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him coat of many colors. Verse 4, we stopped at verse 4. Verse 4. We are stopping at verse 4. I'll read again. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah 
his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. Let's pay attention. I was reading the scriptures and I asked the Holy Ghost, God, what is it that you want to say? Verse 1. Jacob dwelt in the land where his fathers, wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. I wouldn't want to go into that topic, but I want to just give you a little illustration. Jacob is a type of Jesus. He's a type of Jesus. But when we say he's a type of Jesus, it's a progressive revelation of the Father. It's a progressive revelation of the Father. It's a progressive revelation of whom the, of whom the Godhead is, God. Now, there is a land called Canaan. I think you can see that in your Bible. There is a land called Canaan. Canaan is also a type. And it's a type, the Bible says, if you look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 7. Abraham was promised a land. It says, I will take you out of this land and take you to a land wherein I will give unto your generations, your children and your children after you. And that's the land that is flowing with milk and honey. It's the land of Canaan. It's a type of heaven. When we were in Bible school, they used to teach us typology and tell us that this is this and this is that. But I don't want to go into that. But if you keep reading the scriptures, it says, Joseph being 17 years old. Why did the Bible emphasize on his age? Why did the Bible emphasize on his age my father would say that everything that comes out from this world has a meaning nothing comes out by mistake everything that comes out from the mouth of God is for somebody there is no mistake in the Bible why was his age emphasized upon now as a child of God as a lady we are, we, this is a women's conference do I have any men in the house do we have men in the house yes we do alright so I'm trying to generalize it but I'll still, be specific, I'll still be specific about women as a child of God as a man or a woman born again you are young in the faith you're young in the faith you're young you're, you're, the zeal for God is so much that is, a, that is a type of Joseph. He was so, so, so young in God. When we, I give an example of myself, and I know it's applicable to everybody. When we got born again, or even if you are not born again at, a, you know, at an old age, when you are young, you have so much innocence. Are you with me? You have so much innocence, so much, you know, Tenderness, you are so innocent, and that's what this white gown represents. It represents what innocence. You're so tender, you're serving the Lord with zeal, serving the Lord with excitement. Nothing, you're, 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 you're a virgin in the Lord, you are virgin even in your physical body. You come, you're, you're young, nothing. People see you, you're so, you so sincere. You're so nice. You're so, you're not no full, uh, uh, no guile. That's what the Bible says. No guile. You're simple. Look at Ezekiel. So simple. Coming to church. My mother will bring me. Sometimes I will follow my daddy. We'll go for a crusade. I will stand on the altar. Sometimes they will give me a microphone. I will want to sing. I'm using that as an, as an illustration for everybody here. You all have your experiences. Are you with me? Uh, all young and, you know, vulnerable. That's the word. Nothing in your mind. You're plain, plain. And that's how Joseph was. He was 17. He was young. He had nothing in his heart. And then he got born again and began to feed the flocks. 
verse 2. And he was feeding the flocks with his brethren. Why did the Bible say brethren, mom? Because they were truly brethren. They were truly brethren. The Bible gave an example. It said the sons of Bilhah and the sons of what? Zilpah. These were his brethren. They were of the same father, despite the fact that we are not of the same mother. When we come into God, we have one father. And that father is who? God. We are born into one family. We come into church and we are full of expectation. We are full of excitement. We come into church and we are happy. We come into church and we want to join every department available. Choir, I'm there. Sanitation, I'm there. Uh, evangelism, I'm there. Prayer department, I'm there. Women, God, I'm there. everything you, the seal, there's innocence. That fear, that love of God is there. Even in your family, even in your own natural family when you were growing up there's nothing in your mind you embrace all your brothers you embrace all your sisters am i correct that's the truth the bible said he was feeding his flocks with the brethren you go for evangelism it is a great thing to serve jesus it is a great repent or perish repent or perish Repent or perish. Jesus is coming very soon. Jesus saves. That is, the, that is the salvation that we got. But along the line, <laughs> Joseph began to bring evil reports about his brethren. I'm going somewhere. He began to bring evil reports about his brethren. Out of his innocence, Maybe you went out with your fellow evangelism members or you are in the same unit or you are in the same women group and somebody did something that does not belong to this cloth you are wearing. Somebody did something that does not belong to the body of Christ and you go and say, ah, mommy, this person did not do something. This, that was the cause of Joseph's problem. Are you with me? Because his garment was still clear. His garment was white. There was nothing in his heart. When we come sometimes as Christians, we come to church with innocence and we join groups. And you will see one old member that will be there to puncture you. Puncture that thing that you think you say you have. You have zeal. My friend Nodana, we have been here before you. That was the cause of Joseph's problem. Joseph went out with his brethren and found out that while his garment was white, their own was already spotted. He had an innocent heart. But he was not moving with the same flock. They were brethren, but they were not brethren. <laughs> I said they were brethren, but they were not brethren. They are not of the same category. And that was the cause of the hatred. When we come into God, when we come into church and we want to serve God with a good heart, we don't want to add five naira to any quotation. We don't want to add any money to serving God. They say, bring this. You say, I will do it. Somebody will say, now only you did. Why you did? You want to say you, you did, Abby. Women of Vision 2013, we want to contribute. And not everybody says, I will contribute 5,000. Somebody says, I have more than 5,000. I will give 20,000. Mm -hmm. Because Nadia, Dia Dia Naruna Oil Company. But a heart of Joseph is a pure heart. 
that wants to serve God irrespective of anything but he was not with his brethren the brethren were not with him he was with his brethren but the brethren were not with him he had a clean heart and that caused problem now look at verse 3 now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children go back to verse 1 and Jacob dwelt in the land go back to verse 3 now Israel loved Joseph what's the difference the name name did what changed there was a change it brings me back to my introduction God the father is in love with everybody he gives sunshine he gives rain to both to the wicked and to the just God the father is not an unjust God he is a God of justice so he gives to whomever even the unrighteous prosper sometimes you say why are they unright because he is a good God but now when you come into the house of God now when you enter into the inner court now when you are a Joseph now when your garment is clean he calls you I am Israel I am no more Jacob I brought you in you are no more from the covenant of Jacob. You have entered into the covenant of Israel. It's a new covenant. He said, now, Joseph, because he had proved himself as someone who loved God, because he had proved himself as somebody with a good zeal for God, his name, somebody, God said, okay, I will show you another side of me. To the whole world, I can be Jacob. But to you, I will be Israel. I will be Israel. When you pass the outer court, when you pass the middle court, and you enter into the holies of holies, he, re he, re he unveils himself and shows you another nature, that he is Israel. That he is the one who has bought you with a price and has paid your ransom. Now, let me continue. Verse 3. Because he was the son of what? His old age. Because he was the son of his old I'm going somewhere. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Are you there? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. My emphasis is the cloud of witnesses. He was the son of his old age. God the Father has moved from generation to generation, dispensation to dispensation. We are now in the dispensation of grace. For those of us who went to Bible school, they tell, tell us that we are now in the dispensation of grace. We've, we now have a cloud of witnesses. He's waiting very soon, soon and very soon, there will be a, there will be a, a sound of the trumpet and then those who are dead will come up the rapture will soon take place so he the God the father is like an old man waiting for his come up he loved him more you know I feel that the, 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 the generations have, before us will be jealous of us because they, God did so much for us this time around he said the latter and the former I will pour in one generation the latter glory and the former in one generation because he loves us 
We are the children of his old age. There is a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, watching to say, eh? I'm sure Elijah will be saying, eh? So these people have the Holy Spirit. They have angels. They have the word of God. They have the fruits of... Look at all this. All this riches surrounding... We didn't have it in our time. That's what they are going to say. They didn't have it in their time. The Old Testament saints didn't have it. But we have it. But we have it. Because he was the son of his old That's why he was so loved. I'm going somewhere. Now he made him a coat of what? Many colors. Many colors. My sister, come up here. As a child of God... As a child of God, one who is born of the Lord, you're serving the Lord with zeal. You're serving the Lord with, with happiness. You're serving the Lord. You're serving the Lord. You're innocent. You feel, you know, everybody is a Christian like you. You feel everybody loves you like you do. You feel that when somebody says yes, yes is yes. You feel that when somebody says no, no is no. You trust. You go and meet somebody and say, I want to tell you my, my, my problem. They say, don't worry, tell me. Hey, brother, so, so, and so. I went to his house, so it's not as if I... It's not as if I planned to. We just I wanted to visit him so that from there we'll go out for evangelism. And uh, along the line, brother locked door, and he raped me. As he raped me, he he he, he deflowered me, and he spoiled my garment. And then you think that you are talking to somebody. The next day, there is a women there is a women fellowship meeting, and they start praying, and it turns to prayer points. Sister, along the line, you got yourself pregnant. And you ended up having another abortion. And your garment began to be sold more and more. More and more. You serve God with your whole heart. You trained all your children in church. And they grew up to become drug addicts. They smoke Igbo and they are staining the testimony of God in your life. You are a pastor's wife. Why you tell other people's children, don't do it? Your own children will do it and come and say, uh -huh, what will you do? You don't have the boldness anymore because your garment is being stained. I'm a Joseph. I have my own story. I'm a Joseph. Oge Chizikel has her own story. Every one of us in this auditorium has her own story. I'm born again. I'm, I'm a Joseph. My garment is clean, but my husband still beats me up. And I come to church with the beating and I tell them I fell down from the staircase. I'm lying. And because you're a pastor's wife, you can't open your mouth and say it. My garment is being stained and I'm asking, what happened to me? I came in as a 17 year old. I came in with zeal for God. I came in with strength for God. God, where are you? God, where are you? God, where are you? Why 
is my garment being stained? Am I getting insults? Why are they insulting me? Because of what? Because of what? Some things you cannot say. You keep it to yourself. But in the presence of Jehovah, your garment is stained. He sees it. As a young girl, you never envisage that you will ever think of having an abortion. But you did. And so your garment is stained. Not for one man, not for two men, not for three men. You thought this one will marry you. He said, I will marry you. He didn't marry you. But yet you still love God. Yet you are still in the church. Yet you still sing in the choir. There is nobody in this auditorium that will tell me he has not had his clothes stained. Let that person stand up. Let me see. I'm waiting. Sometimes you ask, Nami born this child, Abi Nami, Abi I pick for road. When your children will behave in a way, you begin to ask, Nami Bona, Mabi, person you give me. Sometimes you would ask, Nami married this man, Abi, was I sleeping? Was I, was I in my right mind? But I came to God, I asked him, and he said it is his will. <laughs> God and he said it is my will how come I entered and then this will is turning to something else it's true it's true my mom is Ogechi here has stains I represent a generation of girls a generation of women Who came to God innocently? Who? Who came to God with her garment white? With zeal. With innocence. I represent a generation. What will happen to this generation? I ask. God cannot leave us like this. I say God cannot leave us like this. I say God cannot leave us like this. I say God cannot leave us like this. Tell your neighbor God cannot leave you in this situation. Tell your neighbor, God cannot leave. It's impossible. God cannot leave you. He can't leave you in this situation. I hear the word of the Lord saying, hold on. I have a better plan for you. I hear the word of the Lord saying, hold on. I will turn your mourning into dancing. I will turn that ashes into beauty. That stain in your life, that soul that has refused to go. You are serving the Lord with it. You are still dancing with it. You are still praising with it. You still come to church with it. You still say, God, Lekwam, Chineke, Lekwam, Jehovah, Lekwam. He won't leave you. It's impossible. You came to God innocently. And there was a promise that after nine months, you will have a child. Why is the child not coming? My mom, why? You pray for others, they give birth. Why is your own not coming?
they mock you and give you more stains in this garment that you are trying to patch they tell you you are a barren woman you carry it and still come to church you still carry it and come to church you refuse to stay outside I will remain in the house of the Lord I will remain I will dwell I will stay even if he kills me I prefer to stay in the house of the Lord I'm not going anywhere I'm not going anywhere David said it's better for me to fall and die in the hands of the Lord than to die in the hands of my enemies. I'm not going anywhere. Let my garment be stained. I don't mind. I will stay. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. Yes, it may smell. I will still look for the master. I may be smelling. My issues may be smelling, mommy. My issues may be smelling. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. But rather than go away, I will press my way. I'll press my way through. I'll press my way through. I'll press my way through. I'll press my way. I'll press my way. I'll pray it out. I will pray it out. I will sing it out. I will shout it out. I will fight it out. I will dig it out until I get a result. Like the woman with the issue of blood. She wasn't born that way. The woman with the issue of blood, she used to have her regular menses. When she was a young girl, maybe at, her, at 12, 13, 14, 15, suddenly she saw her first blood and she would run to her mommy. Mommy, I've seen my first blood like a normal child. But suddenly along the way, problems began to mess her up. Problems began to mess her up. I mess her up. I mess her up. 12 good years messed up messed up people that should not talk to her talk to her people that should not address her addressed her where she is supposed to be in life they say madam stay this way you are smelling okay yes everybody has rejected me but I will turn to the maker of heaven and earth I will enter into the inner court and stay there. I have good news for you. I've got good news for you. I'm going to close soon. The Bible said he made him a coat of many colors. Turn to the book of Romans quickly. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 and 30. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 and 30. For whom he did for no, he also did what predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Whom he called, then he also justified and whom he justified then he also glorified what am i trying to say the almighty god knew before time that your clothes will have many colors <laughs> the almighty god in his foreknowledge knew that you will be stained with many colors he knew. He knew that you will be stained front back. And he walked in mathematics that surprised the devil. He knew beforehand that you will be clothed with so many colors that will look like shame, look like disgrace, look like what mistakes in your life. And that's why he called joseph as israel and say today i'm giving you a cloth of many colors today 
I'm giving you a cloth of many colors. What people call disgrace will be your glory. Amen. Thank you. What people call disgrace. What people said, oh, look at her. She can't be. She's already messed up. She's a barren woman. She's this. She's that. Her husband does not like her. Her children are this. She's this. She's that. She's a failure. She's an illiterate. God says, I'm turning it around. God said, I'm turning it around. I'm turning it. I'm turning it. I'm turning it because I foreknew you. Because I foreknew you. Because I have already predestined you. Because I have already called you out. I have justified you even before you came. My mom. Before I was born, God knew. <laughs> before you were born, God knew. He had a plan. And that's why he has given you a cloth of many colors. So that is not for your shame. It's for your glory. What the enemy taught that he would use to waylay you on the road. Tell him it's a, it's a stepping stone. It's a stepping stone. I said 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 it's a stepping stone. I'm justified. I have no reason to hide away from God. Because even before I made that mistake, Papa God knew. Even before you did that thing, Papa God knew. And he made provision for you. I'm justified. I'm justified. And the Bible says, He who he justified, he glorified. I'm glorified. I said, Receive glory. Receive glory. Receive glory. Receive glory. Receive glory. Out of you shall come out nations. Nations that will give God glory. Stand to your feet. Christian Pentecostal Mission International presents Women of Vision International Conference 2013. Fear the God of Wonders. Join Ms. Outreach of Christian Pentecostal Mission International under the Apostolic and Prophetic Ministry of God's Anointed Servants, Rev. Dr. O. Isakel, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercer Isakel, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator, and other anointed servants of God as they present Faith Clinic every Tuesday. At Faith Clinic, sinners become saints, the sick heal, the barren conceive, the oppressed are set free, the demon possessed delivered. Time, 9 a.m. Ms. Outreach also extends love and antenatal health care prayer sessions for expectant mothers and pregnant women every Wednesday at 4 p.m. prompt. And also every Thursday at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for business commission where men and women are commissioned with grace to succeed in business, career, family life, and so on. At Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. Peace outrage, reaching out to the troubled souls. Don't miss it. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. God has a plan for you. A plan to give you a bright future. Come and experience expository teachings and a powerful prophetic breakthrough service this Sunday at Christian Pentecostal Mission International with God's anointed servants, Rev. Dr. O. Isakel, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercy Isakel, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator, and other anointed servants of God. Worship with us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. At Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. You can also worship with any CPM International branch close to you. It will be a time of salvation, healing, deliverance in the presence of God. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs>